What time is it? Early. I feel well. That? It's six in the morning. Can't this wait till the weekend? I was up. Should I put on some coffee then? Sure. Finish it later. Thanks. Hey. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm good. So I was thinking maybe I could cook dinner for us tonight. Well, what's the occasion? I don't know. I kind of feel like I haven't seen you all week and it would be nice. Sounds good. So you'll be here? Of course. Jesus, babe, can you wait till I'm done? Seriously? How do you squeeze the fucking toothpaste? What? You always squeeze it from the top. I've said from the bottom. Okay. Love you. She gets home around six. What about him? Light. Squeeze from the bottom. Fucking unbelievable. I've done this before. 
Sí, Thanks for calling Riley Dental. This is Madeline speaking. How can I help you? Hello? Hey there. Oh, I didn't startle you, did I? No, I was just... Um, how can I help you? I've got an appointment with Dr. Riley. 11 o'clock. Yeah. All right, if you can just fill this one out for me, mm -hmm. and he'll be right with you. People say I got the kind of face that you just want to punch. Of course, my line of work doesn't really help. What's your line of work? I'm just a typical private investigator. So his husband suspected his wife was cheating on him. He hired me to look into it, and what do you know? He was right. She was none too happy about getting caught out. She got a mean right hook. I'll give her that. Pretty good left one, too. What about you? Um, well, I work at a dental surgery. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't help but notice you've got a ring wrapped around your finger. I, yep, yeah, married. Happily? <clears throat> Sorry. Yes? Hello? Dr. Riley will see you now. Just head right down the hall. Um, Randy Cook. Because you never know who you can trust. Hmm? Okay. Yes, she goes. Please call me. Oh, hey. Let me guess. You stuck at work again? I picked up the cheapest wine I could find, and it's not going to drink itself. All right, Matt. See you in a bit. So you really think he's cheating on you? I don't know. It sure feels like it. 
Did you ask him? No. Hey, can you please not do that in here? All right, aren't you the life of the party? And you haven't even touched your wine. It's an expensive rug and you're gonna ash all over it. Yeah, it's an expensive rug and you're gonna ash all over it. Wow, you're an asshole. Oh, come on, I'm not the one sitting here wallowing in my sorrows. If you think he's sleeping around, why don't you just fucking ask him? How hard is that? What, you think he'll just admit to it? Well, it's called communication. You should try it sometime. When was the last time you guys had sex? So it's been a while. I'm not discussing that with you. Well, you never want to talk about it. And I really think you should. I like romance. Waking up in the middle of the night to a hard-on is not going to put me in the mood. Hm. Well, at least you get that. Do you still love him? Yes. I do. But sometimes he just... Ugh. I... <sighs> well, Mads, if that isn't true love, then I don't know what is. There's more on the counter. What time is it? Okay. I gotta go. A little early, isn't it? I'm supposed to be home for dinner. Home to your wife? Yes. Home to my wife. It's funny how quickly your tone changes once you've blown your load. Can we not do this? Do what? Talk? Precisely. I can cook too. Maybe some other time. You said you weren't happy. Mm. Right? Right? Mm hmm. So just leave her. It's not that simple. It is. If you let it be, I wasn't happy with my boyfriend, so I left him. It's not that simple when you're married. <laughs> and what would be simple for you? She fell down a flight of stairs, if brakes in a car stopped working. It was a joke. I didn't find that funny. Anyway, look, I've got to go, because I'm going to be late. Fine. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. OK, OK, I've got to go. Just make sure you lock up on the way out, OK? Hey, Mads. It's getting a little lonely out here. You okay? Yeah, 
I'm fine. Um, I think I'm gonna jump in the shower. Okay, well, I'm just gonna go home then. Talk tomorrow? Great chats. Noah? Noah! She's pissed! Wash it.
just not your day, is it? in the shoulder, once in the chest, and once in the head. One of your eardrums was blown out, so you'll probably experience some loss of hearing. Now, we had to perform emergency surgery to remove the bullet from your head. With serious head injuries such as yours, lingering side effects are expected. There's a risk of seizures, short-term and long-term memory loss, and migraines, like the one you're having now. You've been in cover for 39 days, mate. Where's my wife? Just not your day, is it? There is a body on the floor on the second level. We need AV ASAP, but we'll keep clearing the house. Go upstairs.
white collared sedan. You know, I saw it a few times, but I didn't really think anything of it. And you didn't happen to look at anyone at all? Or? No, I just thought it was a visitor coming to see a friend. Okay. There was a second intruder. By the time he arrived, he was gone. Did a witness provide us with a description? Uh, no. She was a little shaken. So we believe the husband came in after the initial break-in. How's he going? Hanging in there. Barely. There's no signs of robbery. The shit bags did take anything. The sheriff's truck put everything back together. Nice and fucking neat. Language, officer. Well, the language. Thought you were taking time off. I did. So they didn't come here to rob the place. What did they come here for? Sure, there were only two of them. She nodded when I asked, but like I said, she was out of it. break in while she's in the shower. Not expecting anyone else to be here. Sister catches them by surprise. She fights back, maybe hurts one of them. He shoots her in the head, problem solved. They then turn their attention to the bathroom to complete whatever it is they came here to do. Husband gets home, one of the assailants checks it out, gets stopped in his tracks. Husband then tries getting back into the bathroom with the second assailant as his wife. Dirtbag starts blasting through the door, wheezing. Comes out to finish the job while he's doing that. She makes her escape. And her assailant vanishes into the night. And she wasn't able to provide us with any description at all. No. I assume he'd be wearing a mask like his friend, though. Which hospital did they take her to? Hi, Madeline. 
I'm Dr. Whitmore. Oh, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. Is that okay? Okay. Have you had any other sexual activity in the last 72 hours? With your permission, we need to run a few tests. The results of these tests could be very helpful in finding out who did this to you. Now, I just need you to sign here and we'll get started right away. The man who assaulted her used a condom. She told you that? Mm. Did she say anything else? She's not much for words right now. Would you mind if I had a few moments with her? Dr. Whitmore, we're Madeline's parents. I brought us some clothes. I'll catch you at a bit of time. She hasn't spoken, not a word, not even to us. Look, the man who did this is obviously still out there and we need to find him before he does this again. Now, anything she can tell me, even the tiniest little detail, could be very helpful in finding him. I just need a few minutes with her.
Hey, man, look. My name's Detective John Bennett, and I'm here to help find the man who murdered your sister. But I need your help. Was he wearing a mask like his partner? At any time during the attack, did you happen to get a look at his face? Our time's up. Maybe I'll see you again next week. I'll send you the security footage link. You might want to check it out. Great, thanks. Randy.
Do you know anyone who might have had a reason to harm Noah or his wife? Former co-workers, disgruntled employees? No, not that I know of. What was your relationship with him like? Fine, I guess. We worked together. I understand you and Noah are usually the last to leave. Do you remember what time he left on the night of June 14th? I don't know. I usually leave before him. What time did you leave? Office closes at 7, so... I don't know, 7.30. Do you guys have any security camera footage I can look at? No, it's just the alarm system. Okay, thanks. Patricia, I just sent some footage to you. Can you check if there's a timestamp on it for me? Somebody's lying. Run that radio for me too, please. Yeah, no Yeah. I'll be right there. Vehicles reported stolen on June the 3rd. I'm all in Tibet. This is the car we've been looking for. Apart from that, we've got to fuck all the clean shit out of it. Language, Tommy, for Pete's sake, language. No documents, registration, nothing in the glove box? There's fuck all there. There's nothing there. Have you spoken to him since? Just the sound of his voice makes me nauseous. Is everything okay? You've been distant lately. I just can't have this end up like the last time. You want to talk about it? No, I'm fine. Better things to talk about over dinner. to write it down. You know, I understand what you're going through. I've been through it myself, and I know how painful the memories can be. So I get it if you don't feel comfortable talking about it, but we can talk about other things. Anything. I tell you what, 
If you don't feel comfortable talking here, you can reach out to me whenever you do feel like talking, okay? Whenever you do feel comfortable. And like I said, it can be about anything. Okay, I'm always around. Labs finally unlocked the phone. Here you go. Great. Thank you. You told me you left before him on that night. I usually do. Well, you didn't on the night of June 14th. We have tape of you leaving after Noah. There's text messages on his phone from you. With pictures. Pictures that suggest you and he were more than just co-workers. Did you know he was married? Look, I'm not here to shame you. It's not like he held a gun to his head. But this is a homicide case we're working on. This is serious stuff. So why would you lie to me? I have footage dating back months. The fact is you don't usually leave before him, so you lied to me about that. You and he leave together, usually late. But on the night of June 14th, he left before you, earlier than usual. Look, you're going to have to start telling me the truth because I'm going to find out. That's what I do for a living. I find things out. Did you have anything to do with what happened to his wife and sister-in-law on the night of June 14th? No, absolutely not. Then why lie to me? Does your wife know you're smoking again? Don't worry, I'm not going to say anything. Thanks. You know, the longer this thing goes on, the more and more it goes nowhere. Did she get anything on that Anthony Bridgewater character? Certainly doesn't help that he's dead. It doesn't even have a rapture. Bit of a drifter, moved around a lot. Our real friends, family, even his co-workers at the post office said he barely spoke to anybody outside of a long goodbye. No incriminating phone calls or texts other than a few pay phones in the area. 
browser history is just a bunch of porn sites. All we know is he delivered a package to the house once, which she signed for. Her connections, affiliation with any other repeat offenders. Squeaky clean record, even his driving record is spotless. Did you get my message the other day about the number plate you had me run? No. What'd you get? Well, the vehicle belongs to a guy by the name of Randy Cook. So I did a check on him and it turns out he used to be a Melbourne PD. Maddie. Maddie. There's a man here who says he knows you. I'm sorry. Now look, I think I might know who attacked you and your sister. I'm not sure if you got a good glimpse of his face or not. Tell me, but do you recognize this man? Isn't Dudley do right? Benedict fucking Arnold, eh? Benedict too? You know, maybe you should spend less time blowing your salary on cocaine and hookers. Maybe get a library membership, eh? I was wondering when you boys would drop by and say hi. It's a long time no see. What were you doing outside of Tate Realty on the night of June 14th? Mm. Well, I suppose you've also seen surveillance video of me at, um, Riley Dental, huh? Let's get my chompers fixed. Hmm? Gave my business card to the little lady and, well, golly gosh, she wanted to do business. What kind of business? Come on, John, you know what I do now. She had suspicions about her husband that she wanted me to investigate. So I investigate I did. Hmm. You check her financial records, you'll find a PayPal transaction detailing it. What were we doing at the hospital that night? What the fuck were you doing following me around? See, now I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Bull fucking shit. Calm as a bitch, isn't it? You rat fuck. What the Come fuck on, is that supposed to mean, eh? Come on! Step it up! Snake. What else did you see that night, Randy? That night? Now, you see, I just got the information I needed, and I went home. I swear to Christ, if you're withholding any information on my investigation. I tell you, John, if I did have any information, well, come on. You'd be the first person I'd call. Mm, by the way, how's my office treating you? Are you enjoying the Keurig? Hmm? 
Anyway, good luck with the investigation, boys. Hope you get your man. Oh. <laughs> this time. What were you talking about back there? What? You said he was following you. one I saw him. Well, I'm pretty sure I did. Why would he be following you? If I find I saw grapes. Who is that? It's just a patient. Will you, Davidson? What do you care for? Lighting at the wrong end. Look fine. A few years back, before you joined the force, I was working on a case just like this. This abomination of a human being was kidnapping young girls, torturing them, murdering them. I had a suspect I was 100% certain about. I mean, sometimes you just know I felt it in my gut. I just needed the right evidence. While I'm investigating him, my partner had other ideas. Randy Cook. He had a guy he liked. Brought him in for questioning. Next thing you know, he's doing time for the murders. Everything just fell together perfectly. Too perfectly, I thought. But 
The evidence was there. He's in prison. The murders kept happening. So I looked into it further. Turns out Randy had a grudge with the guy. Tried putting him away for years without success. Some scumbag drug dealer. Anyway, we get to find out. Randy planted evidence with the help of another officer. Randy gets kicked off the force. Drug dealer walks free. Meanwhile, the real killer is still out there kidnapping young girls. Well, did you ever find him? It's my guy all along. He was dead when we found him. Natural causes. He's lying comfortably in his king-size bed, a free man. The bodies of two teenage girls lay rotting in his basement. What happened? Noah Tate just woke up. Hello? Ted. It's me. I'm really sorry about what happened with Rebecca. Is Maddie there? It's Noah. Maddie? The man who shot you, did you happen to get a look at his face? No. He was wearing a mask. Did he say anything to you? <laughs> yeah. Just this isn't your day, is it? Why? Well, any description of the suspect, even his voice, could really help with our investigation. What did he sound like? Did he have a low voice, gravelly, high pitched? What do you mean, description? You, you still haven't found them yet, have you? We're doing everything we can. It's been over a month. Up until now, the only witness we've had is your wife. She won't talk. According to her parents, she hardly talks to them either. Have you spoken to her? I've tried. I think this whole thing was premeditated. I think these two planned it out all along, following you, watching you, when you eat, when you sleep, everything about your daily routine. I think they knew the exact time you two would be there that night. The one thing they didn't plan on was you coming home early. Tell me about your relationship with Sophia Ogden. We work together. I know that, but what was your relationship like? Friendly. Define friendly for me. Fuck. Does my wife know? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know for sure. But it's something you'll probably have to talk to her about at some point. Just saying. Do you think she had something to do with this? I kind of doubt it. 
but it's important we consider every possibility. I still don't understand how you don't have any leads. I mean, this is your job, isn't it? To find these, these fucking animals. It's been over a month and you have nothing. Look, I want to catch this guy just as much as you, but I need all the help I can get before someone else gets hurt. Your wife may very well be our best shot at finding him, but the longer she doesn't talk, the longer he's out there. And if anyone can get her to talk, it's you. After all, you are her husband. Hi, Barbara. Where is she? In her room. All day she'll just sit there staring out the window. Did you tell her I was coming? I told her. She you. knows. Can I see her? I'm not so sure if that's a good idea right now. Why? After you woke up, we tried bringing her to the hospital to see you, but she didn't want to come. And when we told her you were coming by today, she just ran off into her room and locked the door. Why? I don't know. She won't talk to anyone, not even us. She wakes up screaming and sometimes she sleepwalks. A few weeks ago, we found her almost a kilometre away in the middle of the night. She was pregnant, Noah. Two months. She had a miscarriage. Maddie, babe, it's me, babe. I've missed you. was a monster, like she didn't know who I was. It's not just you, it's everybody. What's going on with you, John? It's just work stuff, hon. case has been running me dry. Over a month now and I have nothing. And the one person who might be able to break this thing open won't talk. I know she knows something. I can feel it in my gut. She won't say anything. What happened to her? You don't need to know. Horrible things happened to her. Why won't she talk to me? 
Well, trauma, you know, it affects everyone differently and some people do just simply shut down. It can feel overwhelming having to relive the experience, let alone trying to find the words to describe it. And a month really isn't a long time. Whatever she went through, she's still going through it. It's still fresh in her mind. And so distancing herself from anything that reminds her of what happened is the only way she knows how to cope. At least for now. But Elizabeth, if you... Honey, do you remember when we first met? I was climbing the walls with anxiety. The slightest noise would just send my heart racing. And memories would just float through my mind, images and smells, feelings. And I was loaded with so much shame and guilt that somehow I deserved it, which is sadly very, very common. But you're a good man, John, and I felt that. And so I felt safe to open up to you and she will feel that from you too. I just hope she's getting the help that she needs. But you give her time. Can I get you guys anything else? You're all good? No? Okay, cool. Enjoy. Welcome to Mel's. My name is Sophie. Back at the stump, hey? Not too bad. Getting harassed by cops is your cup of tea. Why'd you quit the office? Because I had to. You're back with him, aren't you? How's your wife? her again. I never made you do anything you didn't want to. Do you remember what you said to me that night about hurting her? This isn't my fault. Oh, it isn't. I didn't make you fuck me. You made that decision. I loved you. And you made me think that you loved me too. What are you talking about? I didn't make you feel anything. You're the one that made this into something more than it was. Not me. Why are you acting like I'm responsible? Are you? What is that supposed to mean? You wanted to keep me longer at the office that night. Why? This is ridiculous. Why? When I heard what happened. I blamed myself. I thought maybe if you were home, none of it would have happened. But I never made you stay. I never made you do anything. And for you to even think that I had something to do with it, it breaks my fucking heart. All I ever wanted was to be with you. This is the first time I saw you. And even when you were in hospital, I thought, maybe there's a chance we'll be together. But I knew I was being selfish. And I knew I needed to move on. Not just for myself, but for you too. Does she know? I don't think so.
she needs, you know. I think you need her too. Listen to me. Guilt is a hell of a thing. It'll drive you crazy. The only reason I moved on was because I knew that guilt would never go away. Okay. All right, we'll have to work something out. Yeah, things are all right. Mm -hmm. Um, hey, can I give you a call back? Yeah, yeah, something just came up. All right, all right, thank you. Bye. Hey. How you doing? I'm okay. Yeah? Can we have a chat? Yeah, of course, of course. You've done a really good job here, Frank. No. Oh. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it.
Heard they're still looking for um, one of the guys who did this to you. That's going to be pretty nerve-wracking, huh? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I need your help. Yeah. Anything. Do you remember when your apartment got robbed last year? We went out for drinks and bumped into your cousin. Are you talking about Lester? Lester, yeah. Do you still talk to him? Try not to. He's kind of a bad apple. What? He mentioned about giving you something. Something for protection. Fuck no. You don't want to go down that path. Resting her arms along the back of the bench, she drifted into a wistful contemplation of the splendors spread before her by the bright summer day. A flame of blossoms following the curving walks. Butterflies drifted from border to border as though the flowers themselves arose from their stems. What happened to him? He simply couldn't adapt himself or what was expected from him. He withdrew from outside contacts. He withdrew. Something happened to us all the way. We used to talk to each other. We used to look at each other. We used to laugh. Talk to me, Maddie. Please. If ever there was a time to talk to me, it would be now. We need each other the most. I was at the riverfront the other day. You know where I proposed to you? That was a good day. We had a lot of good days. I love you, Maddie. I loved you then, and I love you now. I just want things to be the way they were. Maddie? Maddie! What did you say to her to set her off like that? Things that are between a husband and wife. I think I know where she is.
Sorry. I'm sorry for everything. I haven't been a great husband. I haven't been a great anything to anyone lately. But I'm trying. Selfish. There are some things I need to tell you. I don't know how. I can't believe this is happening to us. give me a chance. I know I can be the husband that you need. Please? been a while since we've had a date night so I thought maybe a movie or dinner would be good or maybe a game of dance down the pub or we could have watched footy in bed with a pizza just get your mind off this case like just for one night I think that is a great idea Mwah. Yeah.
it's good to get out of the house, isn't it? Yeah. And they have great coffee here. Hi. Thanks. Thank Can you. I get you guys anything else right now? I think we're good for now. It's so good to have my appetite back. I think I'm gonna get a burger. Hi guys, what can I get you? I'll grab the pancakes. Get the waffles. Yes, sweetness. What are you doing? What? She's not here. He says I come to see her. I think I'll get a burger. Actually, no, the schnitzel. Yeah, definitely the schnitzel. What do you feel like, babe? Maddie? Maddie, what's wrong? What's wrong, Maddie? That's him. Are you sure? Yeah. Hundred percent sure that was him. Yeah. It's a cop. No wonder they haven't found anything. For all we know, they're covering it up. I feel sick. Oh, my head. There's some aspirin in the glove box. Why do you have that? For protection. Look, we can't trust anyone. We can't even trust the police. Are you sure you've never seen him before this night? Look, maybe a speeding ticket? Even a patient? No, I've never seen him before. Thomas Wells. What? That's what his ID said, Thomas Wells. Does that name sound familiar? No. You saw his face, didn't you? John, this case you're working on. I thought we weren't discussing work tonight. The woman. I know her. Madeline Tate. Yeah, she was a patient. She came to about I think, five appointments, didn't say a word, then just stopped coming. 
And then one night she called me. What did she say? Madeline, Noah, have you got a few minutes? Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Where's Madeline? She's tired. Be nice if she could join us. It's been a long day. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. So, were you just in the neighborhood? Or is there a reason why you popped past? There was another incident in Geelong. Home invasion. The attacker was wearing a Halloween mask. Noah, there are a lot of similarities to your case. I really need Madeline in this discussion. I told you, she's tired. Madeline, what are you doing? Madeline, do you have any idea what she's been through? She doesn't feel like talking. I understand that, Noah, but she's still a key witness in this case. You've had more than enough time and information to find this guy, okay? She doesn't know anything. And how do you know that? Did she tell you that? She saw his face, didn't she? I think we're done here. She saw his face. You know it, and I know it. And how would you know that? Is this Randy? The victim was able to fight back and remove his mask. And this up with minor injuries. Did she see his face? No, he fled the scene before she could get a look. Her neighbour caught a glance, though. His description wasn't state of the art. But hey, it's a description nonetheless. You've run tests on the mask for skin cells, saliva? Yeah, first thing we did. Should have him back in a few days. If you're having trouble with the cop, why don't you go to the police? I can't. Don't trust them.
Officer Tommy Wells, eh? <sighs> Tell you what, unsavory type if ever you saw one. He definitely shouldn't be a cop. Hmm, <laughs> definitely not. Mind you, the entire department is crooked enough to be hiding behind a corkscrew. That's why I came to you. Of course. Let's have a look here. All right. Right, he's had a number of suspensions over the years. Failed drug test. Uh, and then he was put on charges for domestic violence, which were later dropped. Oh, accused of uh, sexual harassment at a traffic stop. And then, of course, there's the uh, police integrity investigation regarding a certain, well, a certain case where he aided a superior in the planting of evidence. Oh, yeah. And then there is uh, it's this. What? Well, you know, it's kind of peculiar, but it could just be a coincidence. You see how Tommy's been in an on-again, off-again relationship with a girlfriend for the last couple of years. In fact, they were even engaged to be married at one point. Tommy, does the name Sophia Ogden ring any bells with me? I mean, after all the sense she used to work for me. So anyway, last September, she threatens to leave him, yeah? And then our poor Tommy boy is hospitalised. Well, due to a half-hearted attempt at suicide. And then, of course, there's the leave of absence from work, extended leave at that. Wow. He really didn't take it too well, did he? But I hear they're trying to, you know, work things out. You understand, no, I'm not trying to imply anything here. I just find it kind of funny. Don't you? Yeah, another late night at the office, so I don't think I'm going to be able to make it over. Probably just catch up later, yeah? I'm going to head out. Mm. Love you too. Love you too. Bye. Mm. Fuck out of here. Asshole.
Do you have any idea what you're doing? I'm a fucking cop. I know. What the fuck you want from me? On the night of June 14th, in this house, my house, remember? You and your friend broke into this house and murdered Rebecca Holloway in cold blood. You shot her right in the head. You then proceeded to rape her sister, my wife, Madeline. Noah. Noah Tate. Shut up. You came for her. Planned this months in advance. But what you didn't plan was for her sister Rebecca to be here. Right? I want to know why. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. You hurt women what you do. <coughs> Go fuck yourself, you dog. <laughs> you raped my fucking wife! So it's fucking angry. What are you trying to achieve? What are you gonna kill me? You gotta kill a fucking cop? You're gonna confess. So what you got the wrong guy? Look, I was here. I was on the scene, I was fucking working. I saw them load you into the back of the ambulance. Everybody saw me now. It wasn't me. I'm sorry for what happened to your family. I really am. It wasn't me. Where the fuck are you going? Noah! Is this him? Is this the man that hurt you? Look at him! Yes. You fucking lying bitch! Don't look.
heard from Tommy at all this morning? No call, no show yesterday. Yeah. Really? Give me a minute, I'm on my way. They just got the DNA results back from that mask. I think we've got him. And the search continues for missing Melbourne PD officer Thomas Wells. Thomas was last seen five days ago, leaving an inner city gentleman's club. Hey. We have some good news I think you and your wife will appreciate. We have a suspect in custody. Okay? His name's Robert Conway. Does that mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. He's a repeat offender, been suspect in a few rape cases, but he was always clear. What night shift at a FedEx warehouse loading trucks for morning pickup, which is how he met his accomplice. I have no doubt in my mind that this is a man we've been looking for now. If you're not too busy right now, we'd like you to come in for a lineup. You and Madeline. So when your number's called, you need to step forward and read off the card. Number one, step forward. It's just not your day, is it? No. Madeline? Nothing. His eyes, his voice, anything ring a bell. Number two, step forward. Just not your day, is it? No, it didn't sound like you. All right, uh, number three, step forward. It's not your day, is it? No. I 
And are you sure? Please, take one more look. Take your time. That man in that room is the man who murdered your sister. I believe that's the man who raped you and tried to murder your husband. It's okay, you're safe. Just tell me it's him. Tell me it's him. This thing is over. It's not him. Why are you doing this? Mama, I know you saw his face. Just tell me the truth. Tell the fucking truth. John. Wait! That was him! I saw the way you looked at him. Tell me I'm wrong. What do you do it? And those eyes! I remember those eyes. I know you saw his face. Was that him? That was him. God damn. Damn it, Madeline! We... We had him, we... Why didn't you say anything? Why did you lie? This is fucking unbelievable. That cop was cold blood, Madeline. You have to be quiet, okay? You understand? We have to be quiet. At the diner. Why were you so sure that that was him? Uh, I, I, I believed you. I don't know, okay? I thought it was him. I did. I thought we had the right guy. Everyone, they look the same. Sometimes when I think back, I see you. We killed someone. Do you understand? We killed the wrong fucking person. And now the real killer is walking free. Okay, do you want to go across the road? Do you want to go tell your friends what you did? Is that what you want for us to spend our lives in jail? You know what? Maybe I should. I mean, this is insane. How are we going to go back to the way things were? I can't live like this, wondering if we're ever going to get caught. You know, you did this. You and that fucking whore. Oh. Don't touch me. You know, it's amazing how quickly your whole world can come crumbling down around you. One minute you're so in love with someone, you just want to crawl under their skin. And the next minute... Tell me, Noah. Tell me about how you were with her that night. Whilst I was being raped, whilst Beck was being murdered, whilst I was having a miscarriage. Tell me the truth. Was it worth it? No. But you're right. This isn't the time and place for this. No, fuck you. Yes, it is. We're doing this now because we might be going away for a very long time. You weren't happy. I wasn't happy. You didn't want to touch me. You wouldn't look at me. You'd barely kiss me. I tried before her for a really long time. But you just seemed so uninterested. Do you know what it's like for your wife to ignore your touch? How is that a fucking marriage? You never said anything. I, I didn't know you felt that way. 
Still, it's not a reason to go fuck someone I else. I know, I fucked up. And I'm sorry. But does that mean I'm gonna need to pay for this for the rest of my life? I just thought you didn't want me. I did. I do. But I want all of you. And I have to be enough. You are enough. What are we gonna do? We've done terrible things. We can get through this if we stick together.